Brandon. Shout out to everybody in the listening area. Chances are, if you are listening to this, you are an LSU football fan. And damn, I think there's a lot of reason right now to be excited if you are indeed an LSU football fan. And a lot of it goes back to yesterday's press conference. Is that what I want to spend the majority of my time on now? Um, Look, I said that there was no winning the press conference for LSU. And, uh, I mean, look, I, I, whatever that, that was said, because this was not going to be the candidate that just surface level is going to get people really excited about resume or anything else like that. But I actually think that the general listening audience to kind of coming along this journey with us together, we've been on this journey. I think we've kind of come to, uh, see eye to eye on maybe some of the strengths that Jones is bringing to bear in terms of resume and everything else. Uh, but we hadn't heard him talk. We, we hadn't actually been able to sit down in a room with him quite yet. And and that's what I was most intrigued to see because that was something that was one of the kind of core requirements of this search from the beginning. Um, if you read the subtext of what Coach O and, and everybody else has said publicly about the coaching search, the subtext is basically one giant condemnation of Bo Pelini and the guy that you had last year. And one of the main pillars of that condemnation that they kept coming back to was they wanted somebody with presence. They wanted somebody who could connect with the team, connect with these players. What does that mean? That Bo Pelini failed utterly in those regards. One of the many areas in which it failed. Um, and, and look, that that's all feels pretty obvious, right? When you look at the players that uh, opted out, when you look at how the players seemingly would respond when he would be yelling at them on the sideline and they would kind of be rolling their eyes, not even paying attention. Uh, when you just look at the, the the fact that nobody had any clue what they were doing all year long, it was absolutely a guy that did not connect in any form or fashion with his players. Uh, so they wanted somebody with presence. They wanted somebody who, when you spend just a couple of minutes with them, your blood starts to get flowing a little bit. You start to get excited. And if you listen to that uh, Durante Jones press conference yesterday, I don't know how you couldn't help but feel that way. Um, I know we just played it during headlines, but it's a great base from which this thing, uh, this conversation starts. So let's play Durante Jones, too, as uh, again, because here he is laying out his vision for this 2021 LSU defense. Players first, scheme second, right? Players first, scheme second. And so we want to put our guys in the best position to make plays, uh, minimize error, make sure we're over communicating, have an attacking style defense uh, where we can dictate the terms and play fast. You know, these guys are here for their athletic ability. Uh, we're going to give them some techniques and fundamentals, and we're going to harp on that. We're going to be very detailed in that. We're going to, like, you know, coaches have already probably talked to you about in terms of probably based out of a 4-3 because you have, you know, some studs on the outside with Ali Gay and you have Andre Anthony, those guys like that, that can set the edge and play fast. And so want to utilize their talents where they can be on the edge, play half a half a man and uh, disrupt the passing game. Um, also leading to that to be very physical in the run game. The biggest thing that we want to do is do everything as violent as possible. And that's the aggressive mindset that we want to set forth. going. Forward. Whew, okay, there's so much to break down there. Uh, first off, the baseline is very obvious, but sadly it's something that too many coaches do not or are not willing to engage with. Uh, and that is this idea of players over scheme. And you see this at every level. Uh, there are coaches who do this and there are coaches who refuse to. Why? Uh, because it's hard. I mean, right as a coach, learning a system and really mastering it can take years, if you ever master it at all, right? It's a constantly evolving game. And so when then you maybe have to switch up the schemes or you got to try new things or maybe even like switch up fronts or something, like that's incredibly intimidating for a coach. And it can feel a bit like starting over. So I think that leads a lot of coaches to be like, okay, this is what we do. And uh, the bottom line is you're either going to fall in line and you're going to do this or we're going to find somebody who will? And uh, that can work on the high school level, certainly, right? You got schools like Curtis, where, I mean, they literally, what, indoctrinate those kids from like seventh or eighth grade on. I see you nodding your head back there, Dan. I know West Monroe does similar things as well. So, like, that, 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 that can work on the high school level. But when you get to college and you're trying to really maximize talent and the margins of error get tighter and tighter, I think you have to be willing to uh, customize to what your player's strengths are. It just makes too much sense, right? It's something that Dave Aranda was a master at. He would look at the personnel he had every single year, and he would figure out, okay, uh, what do I need to adjust? Because every defense is different, right? No no, no two defenses are the same. 
And so he would figure out, what do I need to adjust to highlight the strengths while hiding the weaknesses? So player over scheme already. And, and then he goes to back that up with actual tangible scheme. Talking about, and like, so because of that, we will be a four man front, which makes sense. Now, you'll be multiple, but in terms of your base, it's going to be a four man front because that's the players that you have. With Tyler Shelvin and Apu Aika leaving, you don't have a true nose guard anymore. Okay. With Jaquail and Roy, with Mason Smith, with Logan, with Farrell, you got great three techs. You got guys who can shade on the center. And then, as he referenced on the edge, Ali Gay, Andre Anthony, BJ Ojolari. You got pass rushers off the edge. Your most successful path, dictated by the personnel, is to be a four man front. So, scheme, or excuse me, players over scheme, four man front, you're already seeing it. Um, the, the as violent as possible line is fun just because that's an edge that this LSU defense had lost. But, but, but I don't want you to think that it's the starting point, right? Uh, Bo in the uh, Bayou Ford YouTube chat said, look, the violence thing is nice, but like it's nothing without fundamentals. Well, let's be clear. When you listen back to the answer, he started with technique and fundamentals. And that is the basis upon which his entire house will be built. Uh, in fact, later in the press conference, he actually apologized for mentioning technique and fundamentals too much. But like he said, that is the bot. Like, if you do those things right, that's how you have success in football. Because you can be in the right spot scheme-wise or mentally, but if you are not coached with the correct technique, you will not have success. So it's a ground-up sort of process. And on the ground floor, uh, from a from a teaching player standpoint, it starts with technique and fundamentals. And so when it comes to coaching secondaries, who better than the man who has been doing this um, on the NFL level for years now. And look, I know that Look, the, the Corey Raymond piece is always interesting, right? Reportedly, there's a little smoke to the fact that maybe Raymond wasn't too happy with the Bill Bush hire. And maybe there was some friction there that never quite got resolved. Well, uh, here's what Durante Jones had to say about coaching safeties and, and working with Corey Raymond. There's talent on the back end, I believe, especially with the safety position. Going forward, want to be technique and fundamentally sound. Uh, we want to make sure our communication is clear and, and, and precise, making sure everyone's on the same page. And working with Corey, I've known Corey for a couple of years, for quite a, quite a few time, for quite a few years now, dating back to when we both were coaching high school ball here in Louisiana. So having that relationship, uh, we've clinic with each other over the years, and so we have some of the same beliefs. And so I think the transition would be much easier in that way. We'll be working together. And so when the safeties and corners are working together, it minimizes any miscommunications. And so I'm excited about the back end being on the same page, minimizing the communication, working with Corey, working the press technique, working the safeties to be very physical in the run game, and also having some uh, deep zone awareness and playmaking ability. I mean, when I hear the words minimize communication, after the horror show of over-communicating that was last year, where every single snap seemingly, if you went in a pre-snap motion, it was like you lobbed a grenade into the LSU defense, Arms gesticulating wildly all over the field. Guys pointing, guys shrugging their shoulder. Who has who? We have no idea. So when I hear your core philosophy is going to be to minimize communication, make sure these guys are in the correct position to succeed, I can't help but get excited. Again, everything that Durante Jones seems to represent and seems to say is a direct rebuke against the hiring failures of last season, and it's so exciting for that reason. Also, I love the fact that he has worked so closely with Corey Raymond. And when you're talking about this safety group, uh, they did not have the fundamentals last year, okay? They did not, they were not in the correct positions to succeed. I think the guys, the two position groups that have the most potential to come back this year, I'm looking at safeties and I'm looking at linebackers. I think those two groups more than anybody struggled uh, with the decisions that were made. I don't think Mo Hampton's that bad, right? I think Damone Clark is probably a lot better than what we saw last year. And I think Jones and Baker and Carter and the rest of this staff, I think they're the guys that are going to get these players back to their potential. So obviously I get long-winded because of how much I'm enjoying Durante Jones. We can revisit some more of the sound a bit later in the show. Right now, let's get ready to welcome in Tampa Bay great and Tampa Bay resident Booger McFarlane as he gets ready for a Super Bowl in his city with his team. Here on Off the Bench, 104.5, 104.3, 94.7. Yeah. 